back for another episode of the Spec 10 List, brought to you by the Tales from the Flipside podcast. Uh, today I'm joined by the best minds in comics, and we're going to try to give you uh, the best content on YouTube. If you're not already subscribed, we'd ask you to do that now. Uh, additionally, please like this video. It helps with our algorithm. Uh, let's get into it. Number 10. Number 10. Still like your suit better, Dino. All right. So America, number seven. Um, it is uh, an origin story for America. This is, uh, you know, later in the run, it didn't have um, a ton of orders. I think it's somewhere between 10 and 12,000 maybe. Uh, don't quote me on that. But uh, it also uh, it's an homage to uh, the boss, right? Uh, born in America or born in the USA? Yes. Yep, absolutely. Um, there are zero copies available as of today on eBay. Um, I've combed uh, Columbus, Ohio and for all the back issues of America, and there are none. Um, she's going to be coming to the MCU anytime. Um, perhaps her origin story would be uh, important. Um, when I went through digging to find out more about the origin story, because I don't have the copy yet I bought, um, there seemed to be some ties to uh, one of the twins in WandaVision. Um, Wicked. Again, don't quote me on that. I haven't read the story yet, but the little bit of research I could find. Uh, Billy, who, who knows what will happen with that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, it, this exactly. cover is an absolute banger. Um, you know, nobody was ordering ordering America. Even even number one got like forty thousand, which is small for a first. Um, you know, for for number one of a of a new character. Uh, I think all of these these books, all the way from sort of seven to twelve, are huge pickups. Uh, but this one must have, right? Absolutely must have. Great pick, Jessup. Yeah, you know what's Thanks. interesting about this? Real quick, let me add. Um, this origin is actually a separate origin story from her. It is her uh, origin story, but it's the second origin story. It's more about the um, multiverse and the utopian uh, parallel. And uh, it's, it's a very important part, especially everything that could possibly tie into WandaVision. Due to what's happening in WandaVision, the multiverse is breaking, so to speak. She's going to be in Doctor Strange 2 in the Multiverse of Madness. And uh, so is Wanda. I expect to see them both there. Good stuff, guys, and uh, I'm a little shocked that nobody has said the obvious. To hell with Chris Evans. This is America's ass. Number nine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this, this this was my pick this week. Uh, Unbeatable Squirrel Girl number one. This is a one in 25 by Art Adams. Um, you know, I, as I think about books that are absolute bangers, this is at the very top of my list. Uh, Squirrel Girl's first appearance isn't a great first in my opinion um so as she comes to prominence and we're going to see this character if you look at what marvel does on the cartoons she's front and center in almost all of them uh this this book uh right here is the one you want to grab i think if you want to if you want to spec on squirrel girl uh beautiful colors great cover art adams hard to beat um and i think it has huge potential. It, it sells for right now sort of 75 to 100, um, but I don't think it's staying there very long. This book had about 60,000 ordered by retailers. Uh, when you're looking at one in 25, this is something I think you want to have in your PC. So I'd be grabbing this. Yeah, this is Art Adams doing what Art Adams does best. And uh, I don't I don't think he gets enough credit, um, but he's up there with the Perez's and, and Finch's in terms of the level of detail that he brings to a crowded um, uh, scene like this. And then I don't know who did the coloring for this, but uh, I remember when you first showed me this, Ben, uh, the colors just are just pop. I I'm just really impressed by the, uh, the palette, um, the colorist used. It it's beautiful. 
Yeah, I've hunted this book for years. It's actually not that easy to track down for whatever reason. It feels like it's a lot more scarce than its ratio would suggest. Um, but I'd be grabbing this if you ever see it. Good stuff, guys. Number eight. This is uh, my pick, and this is uh, Black Panther number five. This is actually the newsstand edition. Um, newsstand or direct, it don't matter. Um, and these newsstands are out there, so keep your eye out. Um, this is basically the uh, Dark Rain run where basically J. J Scott Campbell um, does the majority or almost all the cover A's. Um, this is the storyline that begins and ends with um, T'Challa um, handing the reins to Shuri and Shuri becoming Black Panther. And this particular single issue, number five, is the first full appearance of Shuri as the Black Panther. This one is very important. I think the retailer orders are somewhere between 40, 50,000 in that, you know, ballpark. But uh, yeah, I think this book, you know, right now, I mean, I've seen it as high as 150, 200. Right now, it's about uh, between 75 and 125 or best offer. And I'm seeing sales around 75 raw near mint. And, um, I think that the uh, ceiling is much higher than that. I think if you're going to get into this book, you better get into it now. Good stuff. Number seven. Okay, so we have uh, Star Wars Screaming Citadel. This is my pick. Uh, this is the fried pie variant. Um, what you have here is a first appearance. You have her in the background, the queen of Katath Atten. Also, you, this is the first appearance of the planet. Uh, now, the queen is actually, she's a symbiote. She feeds off of her subjects. And and you have the team up of, um, of uh, Luke Skywalker and Dr. Afra. Dr. Afra basically coaxes um, Luke Skywalker into a mission. She, she basically tries to pimp him out to the queen in order to get this rare artifact. Uh, the story in and of itself is, is interesting. You have this first appearance of, of, a pretty, of a pretty interesting character. Also, you have the first appearance of a planet that could be used, you know, somewhere, somewhere down the line. Um, I, also, I talked about, there's, there's quite a few variants for this book. And, but this, this to me, this one is the standout, the fried pie variant. And uh, I would say, as far as price goes, I forgot to mention that uh, this fried pie variant goes for like fifteen dollars. And uh, make sure it's sealed. Uh, they came uh, poly bagged. Now, Carter, for people who are not familiar with fried pie comics, uh, maybe newer to comics, where would you have purchased a fried pie variant? I, I believe uh, Second and Charles. Am I correct on that? Yes. Second and okay. Charles. And yep. Books a Million. And Books, Books a Million. Yep. Books a Million. Yep. So, yeah, they were exclusive to those stores, and uh, they had that nifty little logo by the uh, by the by the box there. By the um, barcode. PC. Yes. Yep. And usually, usually if you go to Second and Charles, I'll speak from experience there, uh, they have a whole bin usually full of just fried pie variants. So if you look in there, nobody looks in there. So you'll probably can score a couple of these because no one looked in there in like five years. So. Good stuff. Number six. So this is another one of my picks. This is uh, Spider-Man and Wah, uh, number two from volume two of 2020. And this is actually the one in 25 incentive variant. Um. This book is basically dirt cheap, selling for ratio or best offer on the secondary market. Many online retailers have it for just about that, anyways. Um, the reason why I like this book and why I'm not, or why I am actually surprised that it hadn't ta uh, taken off yet, is not only because of the the bank robber cover is unique and sick. Uh, but also, um, orders by retailers were, according to Comicron, were under 15000 and 1 in 25. You're looking at 4% of that. So you're looking right there at about, you know, what, 600 copies max? 
if that, maybe maybe less. If my math is wrong, I apologize. But in the guts is what's important. In the guts is the actual first appearance of Harry Charles, also known as Huri. Now, Harry Charles is a alter ego. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, ego. <laughs> alter ego of Huri. Huri is um, a spy and a pilot that goes under that alias. She basically is one of the new characters and main, um, I guess you could say, uh, bodyguards, warriors of the Dora Milaje from Earth. Um, I think, I believe it's 90124. So she's from the multiverse. Now, she does not become Huri until issue number four of Spider-Man and Wall Volume 2, which she becomes this. I like this character. I think with the Wakanda series coming, new characters in, in, in particular, even though she's from the 1930s and she was built and, and made to kill Nazis, which is also another awesome thing. Um, you know, there's also there's a there's a there's a strong feeling in my gut that says you know hey the multiverse is going on here in the mcu sony what have you and um you know why not peg this uh this character and retcon their story for that continuity i like this book it's a cheap long-term spec play with the wakanda series coming take a look and see if you like it good stuff my friend Number and five. That was, a, that was a retail incentive, right? Yes, one in twenty-five. Okay, Killmonger. This was uh, Mighty Mel B's pick. Um, I'm honored to 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 do this in his stead. Uh, ho hope I do it justice. So Mel picked the the, the entire uh, miniseries, um, and I actually happened to read it uh, uh, last night or the night before. Um, and here's what I'll tell you about the innards. The innards, it, it's, a, it's a really good story. It's a strong story. It basically serves as an interlude um, in the Black Panther movie about how uh, Killmonger uh, went from the United States to uh, Wakanda. And it involves uh, the kingpin and uh, three of the king, kingpin's henchmen. Uh, I think it's Knight, Rook, and... Um, th there's another one. Um, and so we haven't seen the Kingpin introduce the MCU proper yet. I don't know if there's um, really anything within the inner that's um, really strong spec. However, I will say um, I can see this as uh, as an issue one to five set. Uh, uh, starting to climb as the as the movie approaches, I just can't see them uh, ignoring Killmonger in 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 the sequel uh, and the upcoming Wakanda uh, TV uh, series. Um, it, it's he's too good of a villain to just uh, be a one and done. So I I think we'll we'll see the the set. Um, because really, it, it's his only uh, solo title for a strong villain. It's like, uh, I, I mean, he, he is a signature villain. I'll, I'll you know, put him up there with, um, uh, obviously not the history, but, you know, say that's a, a Joker or something, right? Um, so I, I, I believe in the character a lot. Now, one other thing I'll say about this series um, there are just some beautiful covers, some beautiful variants and second prints to this. So for issue one, um, you have a Michael B. Jordan photo cover, very hard to find. Uh, for issue one, you have the second print, which has the iconic image of um, Killmonger lifting up Black Panther, about to throw him um, uh, over, over, the, over the waterfall. Um, and, uh, and issue, issue two has a, a beautiful uh, variant with uh, Killmonger um, uh, holding uh, 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 double barreling 
uh, you know, a, a gun in each hand. Uh, it's just awesome. So, um, yeah, I, I think um, uh, between all that, Killmonger, um, there's a lot to be said uh, for uh, the, uh, I think people will desire to have uh, these issues as a set or individual issues or variants in Second Prince. Now, Carter, you had mentioned on your YouTube channel that you perceived Killmonger number one as the first appearance of this iteration of Killmonger, hmm. uh, which you saw as you know something unique, separate, and distinct from uh, his appearance initially, you know, in Jungle Action Comics. Right. And can you explain that or, or extrapolate a little bit on that? Yeah, sure. Um, it, it, Look, what I had mentioned was, like, when you look at the first appearance of Killmonger in that Bronze Age book, uh, he, you know, he just, he looks run-of-the-mill. He looks, he kind of looks dumb, to be quite honest with you. And Yeah, I, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that, that really, it's, I think he has, like, a jerry curl shag hmm. thing going. It's just like, in biker shorts, it's just, it's, he looks dumb. Uh, this year... Uh, they, 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 of course, lifted the look from this Killmonger series, or they lifted the look for this Killmonger series from the movie, yep. and this is what they're going to be using. This is the, this is the look they're, they're going to be using from here on out. Um, they're never going to go back to the Shag Jerry Curl ever again. So this, this is the look. You have like those, those marks to, to. Um, mark you have those markings to distinguish or to denote uh, each kill that uh, Eric Killmonger has made, and uh, you know it, I, I just think this is this is what we're going to see from here on out. I, I get your drift. You know what it reminds me of, kind of, uh, is that Exiles number two with the Tessa Thompson. Exactly. Valerie. Yep. That kind of situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. good, good analysis. Right. Well, like a, a refresh on a character is never a bad thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in, in a market where people are buying the Thunderstruck Thor costume as a <laughs> play, <laughs> you don't do that if you watch this show. Uh, it, it makes a lot more sense to be uh, snagging up those Killmonger books. Let's move on to book number four. And if you do, send all the photos to our Instagram page. So Nico Sweet can see. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <sighs> uh, this one's a this one's a, a one of mine. So uh, yeah, thanks for voting me at number four, gentlemen. Uh, so let me let me give you a breakdown on what this is here, real quick. We have Ironheart number nine, and here is the synopsis: guest starring Shuri, hot on the trail of the Ten Rings. Uh, trying to stop whatever destruction they have planned, Ironheart pays a visit to Wakanda. And it doesn't exactly hit it off with Princess Shuri. So what I'm thinking here is gateways into a bunch of things. And if you caught the Ten Rings, you should know that's a tie into Shang-Chi. And, of course, if you caught the Shuri part, well, of course, you know it's a tie into Wakanda. And, of course, if you know anything about Ironheart, they've got a lot of things planned for her, including her own series, as well as an appearance in the Armor Wars. And you wonder how they're going to explore more of these connections throughout the world. And uh, I do believe that this book may be a gateway as far as how that is to proceed going forward. And it's really not a bad story at all, also. So. I read an article about that a while ago. Hmm. I did not know there was an article on it. Yeah. Yeah. The author was exceptional. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is my take. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for having me on this panel. Uh, this is uh, Something is Killing the Children, number six. It's a one per store variant. Uh, I, I completely think this book is completely undervalued uh, when you see the a cover which was open to order going for you know 40 to 50 bucks this is going from like somewhere between 30 to 50 bucks too uh and uh i just also wanted to mention that there's uh four other covers you also have the jenny frizen uh final order cutoff book and the first incentive variant for something is killed in the children the 
uh, Jenny Frizen, one in 25. And with this book, you have two first appearances of Cecilia and Aaron. So as the trend keeps on going up, as books keep on, uh, as something is killing the trend, books keep on going up higher. Like this is a, definitely a book to watch for. Yeah, it's a good pick, Aaron. Um, I mean, all of these books are super hot, and for whatever reason, this one isn't getting the love it deserves. Um, I think it's a really, really smart pick. Uh, I need to grab it because I don't have it right now. <laughs> yeah, you guys are getting me in trouble. I'm not to get my wallet out. So. It, also, I think, um, I think, I, I could be mistaken, but that could be the first cover appearance of the Order of St. George, mm. or at least they're, they're hitmen. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Right. Yeah, that's a good point, Rich. Banger. Love it. Oh, boy. There's only two left. Someone just stole a 9-8 on eBay. <laughs> We're not oh. even... well, well, hello. It's me again. And uh, it's a... It's another one of my picks, and, and as a very wise stock advisor told me, buy on the dip. Uh, this this book right here has calmed down to about thirty dollars after reaching uh, three figures uh, or initially or around release time, and people forgot. Because let me tell you something: this series took an eleven month hiatus. They just solicited a new episode, a new issue after 11 months and people forgot about it. People's memories got real, real short. This right here is the second print of Black Panther number two. Uh, the first time a Killmonger in a symbiote suit is appeared. Now, uh, th this, this intergalactic empire of Wakanda gets real deep. Let's just say that. And if the world of Wakanda is the name of the first season and the intergalactic empire of Wakanda is the second season. And they decide to explore the Marvel universe through the eyes of Wakanda. Expect this black Panther series to be probably pulled from pretty, pretty hard, especially if, uh, if symbiotes are in play, because that changes the game for a lot of other, you know, locations in the Marvel universe as well. But actually, I just I really dig the cover on this one too. I think it's a sick looking Killmonger outfit, and knowing that it's a symbiote suit just maybe makes it a plus one. Good stuff. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. Number one. All right, here we go. So we got Black Panther one from 1998 from Marvel Knights. This is the first appearance of Okoye, Nakia, Zuri, and also the first appearance of the Dora Mulaje. Excuse me if I butcher that pronunciation. Uh, so You're those close. are the uh, <laughs> close. Okay, okay. So th those are the warriors that protect the uh, the queen and the king of Wakanda. So this book is super on the dip right now, even with Wakanda. Um, announcement, it is only $20. $20 for this book, which is insane. Um, so, Shuri, of course, is the first domino, okay? And, yeah, maybe 1B is also Killmonger as well. But this show can... This show, Wakanda, World of Wakanda, um, I mean... We can easily have a Koye or Nakia, okay, uh, be leading this show. Um, so I think it's um, got incredible upside. A nine point eight sold for uh, one seventy five, and now people are asking for uh, at starting at four fifty for a regular copy. Um, I also do remember that when this movie did come out. Um, like even the Okoye Funko Pop was going for like eighty five bucks, and everyone that came to my Comic Con booth, like during those two weekends preceding the Black Panther movie, everyone was looking for anything with Black Panther on the cover. So this this show is going to be really huge. Um, there's also a Dynamic Forces variant, um, which came in a poly bag with a COA. Um, those were up to 8,000 copies, and 
uh, the signed there were also a signed one um, that was limited to a thousand copies. Um, going back to Okoye, uh, we if you remember during the last Avengers movie, uh, we did see her in this girl power powwow that uh, gave homage to A Force. So it's a possibility for her in that. Um, there's also a comic book series that um, talks about her love life. That could also be a possibility. Um, Nakia, uh, Black Panther's lover, uh, she also becomes a villain named Malice in Black Panther 24. So that's also a very easy storyline that they can now put into the uh, Disney Plus series. So this is a big book. You can buy it now for 20 bucks. Definitely see a 300% ROI. Uh, get 60, uh, sell it for 60, 60 to 75 dollars at the end of the day. I don't know why people are ignoring this book. Um, it's a monster. The actress that plays Okoye right now, she's a free agent. She's she's walked away from Walking Dead, so she wants to explore bigger things. Um, I really thank my friend Jason Shaw for recommending me this book. It's it's a slam dunk, um, huge winner. Get on it. I really love this book. Hey, Phil, um, just to let you know, I do have the newsstand copy of this book. So there is a newsstand copy of this book available. Beautiful. Beautiful. Of course you do. I bet, I bet it's Ghost. <laughs> Rich, the master <laughs> of newsstands. Gentlemen, uh, is there a preference for the Dynamic Forces cover, the newsstand cover, or... Uh... The newsstand is a home run if you can find it. I don't know how Rich finds this stuff. He's like the Carter of newsstands. Uh, <laughs> right. I, don't well, know I mean, it. the Marvel Knights weren't nearly as rare in newsstand as, uh, you know, say like uh, a 2013, 2014 Marvel book, but they sure as hell aren't easy to find um, and certainly not in high grade. Uh, you guys both prefer the newsstand over the Dynamic Force? Yeah, I do. In high grade, absolutely. And, and what, well, how limited was the Dynamic Forces? That's so, the question. Uh, the DF was um, eight thousand in the yeah. poly bag, and then a thousand. Okay. And what are the right. orders on this book? About seventy, seventy, seventy-five thousand. Like yeah, similar that, to Black Widow. Yeah, so it makes it like a one in ten. You know, and and if you think about that. 8000 for the day wasn't a whole lot, but that's a lot for now for an exclusive when there's, you know, probably a, a, a market that's not as big chasing the variant scene. But then as more and more people are exposed to the property, it does bring people into wanting to purchase that item. So it's, it's, it's interesting because all three, I think you want to always hedge your bets. Besides buying on the dip, you want to hedge your bets and buy all three. <laughs> Especially when you're... What we're dealing with first appearances, in, you know. In 1998, my son was born, and me and his mom used to go to uh, Barnes and Nobles and Borders all the time, and they always had comic books. So, and there was a lot of them around here in Orange County back then. So, my guess is is that um, we're probably looking in the six and a half to ten percent of whatever the dir direct number is. So, if it's sixty, seventy thousand, it's probably six or seven thousand newsstands or less uh, how many are high grade i don't know but i have one great stuff guys great list <laughs>